Finding the sum, the common ratio, the nth term, and the sum to infinite of a geometric progression can be challenging sometimes. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to find the terms, the common ratio, the nth term, and the sum to infinite of the geometric progression. So if you're new to this channel, please consider hitting the subscribing button, uh, like, and share. So we're going to look at this example. This was the question that came in grade 12 uh, in mathematics paper 2, uh, 2022. Okay, so the question reads, given that the third and sixth terms of uh, a geometric progression are 3 fourths and 3 over, four, uh, 3 over 32, respectively, find the first term and the common ratio, then the nth term, and finally the sum to infinite. All right, so we're going to start by finding the first term and the common ratio. So for us to find the first term and the common ratio, we pay attention to the information that we've been given. So the question says, given that the third, the third term, so third term, we are going to write third term, given that the third term and the sixth terms of a geometric progression are 3 over 4 and 3 over 32 respectively. So when they say respectively, it means that this first term is belonging to the, this third term and then this, the sixth term is belonging to 3 over 32. So for us to find the first term, we need to consider collecting information like this. So we're going to say third term is uh, 3 over 4, so 3 fourths. And uh, the sixth term is 3 over 4, 3 over 32. All right, so this is the information that we've been given. So which means n here is 3 and n here is 6. All right, so for us to find the terms of any geometric progression, we are going to depend on a formula. Okay, so the formula for finding the terms of a geometric progression is given by uh, a n is equal to uh, a1, meaning the first term, okay, times the common ratio r to the power n minus 1. So this is the formula that we're going to rely on uh, in order for us to find the, the first term and the common ratio. All right, so since we're given this, this information, we're going to form two equations. So we're going to use this first information to form equation one and uh, the second information to form equation two. So we are going to say a n, where there's n, let's put three because we are, we are starting with the third term. So uh, a three, meaning the third term is equal to a one, which is the first term we don't know. Uh, it's the one that we are looking for times the common ratio. We also don't know then to the power uh, 3 minus 1. Okay, where there's n, we're just replacing it a, a 3. Now, they said the third term is 3 over 4. So, meaning where there's a 3 here, we're going to put 3 over 4 is equal to a 1, the first term, we don't know. The common ratio, we don't know. 3 minus 2, 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, so because we are looking for the first term, which is a1, we are going to divide both sides of this equation by uh, r squared. So we are going to say divide by r squared, then over r squared, like this. All right, so r squared, r squared is cancelling, okay? So we are remaining with uh, 3, over 4 on the left, 
then this over the over the over sign here is same as it, dividing okay dividing by r squared is equal to a a1 okay so the r squared have cancelled and then you have that all right so we are going to have 3 over 4 then we're going to 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 change the sign the division sign and remember this is same as over 1 so once we change the sign into multiplication we swap the second fraction so we're going to have 1 over r squared is equal to a1 okay so 3 times 1 is 3 over 4 times r squared is 4 r squared is equal to a1 all right so we have just uh, written the expression of a1 okay we have just written the expression of a1 so we're going to call this as equation one okay so we also find let's also find uh the equation for the second term for the sixth term all right so we're going to follow the same procedure we're going to say a n is equal to a1 times the common ratio n to the n minus 1 okay so we have a where there is n we put 6 okay 6 is equal to a1 we don't know then r n is 6 minus 1 okay so the sixth term here they told us to say it's 3 over 32 so 3 over 32 is equal to a1 then times r 6 minus 1 is 5 all right so at this stage remember we have an expression for a1 so meaning that where there is a1 here we're going to replace uh, the expression that we found here 3 over 4 r squared so we're going to have 3 over 32 on the left this one is equal to a1 i'm going to open brackets like this then times r to the power 5 okay so a1 we found that a1 is 3 over 4 r squared so we are going to replace or substitute 3 over 4 r squared here okay now this r squared and the r to the power 5 can divide so r squared divided by r squared is 1 then r squared into r to the power 5 is uh, r to the power 3 okay so meaning this we are going to have uh, 3 over 32 is equal to 3 times r cubed is 3 r cubed divided by remember we have a 4 here divided by 4 okay at this stage uh, we are going to cross multiply we'll cross multiply so we're going to have 32 times uh, 3 so 32 times 3 r squared uh, cubed sorry is equal to 3 times 4 3 times 4 okay 32 times 3 r cubed is 96 r cubed is equal to uh, 3 times 4 is 12 so to get the value of r square r cubed you are going to divide by 96 both sides okay so the 96 96 will cancel what is going to remain is uh is this so we have r cubed is equal to 
uh, again 12 can go into 96 so we're going to say 12 into 12 1 12 into 96 is 8 so we're going to have r cubed is equal to 1 over 8 so remember we are looking for the value of r and not r cubed so to undo the r cubed we are going to take uh, the cube root on both sides of this equation okay like this so this and the three will cancel we're going to have r is equal to the cube root of one is one over the cube root of eight is two so therefore r is equal to um half okay so this is the value of r so we have found the common ratio so what is remaining now is for us to find a1 remember a1 we found a1 to be equal to 3 over 4 r squared okay so what we're going to do is that where there's r we're going to replace the value of r which is half for us to find the first term so this is going to be equal to 3 over 4 times half squared so this is going to be equal to uh, 3 over 4 times uh, 1 squared is just 1 over 2 squared is 4 all right so 4 and 4 will cancel and so you remain with it 3 so you conclude and say therefore a1 is equal to uh, 3 so this was the first term all right so we have just found that r is half and a1 which is the first term to be uh, 3 that's what we found now they want us to find the nth term okay so we we'll still rely on the formula for finding the terms of the geometric progression so we're going to have a n is equal to a1 which is the first term times r n minus 1 so a n is equal to the first term we found that it's 3 so we have 3 times uh, r r is half then n minus 1 okay so since they want the nth term this is the formula for the nth term now the only ones they only want us to find the nth term which is an expression so the nth term will just be this this expression that is on the right so we're going to say therefore the nth term is 3 times half n minus 1 okay so this is the nth term of this geometric progression okay so we we'll still keep this we found that the first term a1 is 3 we also found that uh, the common ratio is z half okay so but see they want you to find the sum to infinity so this is two okay the sum to infinity of the progression okay the sum to infinity so the sum to infinity of a geometric progression is given by s the sum to infinite is equal to a1 over 1 minus r uh, provided that r is between negative 1 and 1 so in other words um, the value of r should be less than 1 for this formula to hold okay so when you look at r here r we have half half is same as 
0 0.5 which is less than 1 so meaning it's this the formula is going to hold so we are going to have a1 is 3 so 3 over 1 minus r is half okay so we are going to have down here 1 minus half is is half so we have 3 over half So in other words, we are we are having 3 divided by, because this over is same as divided by uh, 1 over 2. So we are dividing fractions, so this is same as over 1. So we'll keep the first fraction as it is, then we'll change the, the, the sign and flip the second fraction. So we have 2 over 1. So this gives... 3 times 2 is 6. So we conclude, therefore, the sum to infinite is 6. Alright, thank you very much for watching. If you are new to this channel, once again, please consider subscribing, hit the like button, and share. See you in the next video. Goodbye.